roll it. All right. Well, welcome, everyone. This is our second, number two um, podcast, Pulling on Heaven. I mean, it's not that I'm going to count down everyone. That would be interesting, right, to do this? 403,072nd episode. <laughs> and, and here we are still, a little grayer. and uh, <laughs> a beard out on the table. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, welcome, everyone. This is uh, Pulling on Heaven, our uh, podcast, number two, Pulling on Heaven. And uh, Steve Blen is here again. I think you have some questions on some of the topics, some of the things we talked on, like kingdom of heaven, the invisible God, and the nature yeah. of God, and, and how we think. Well, first of all, I want to give a shout out to Jonathan for hosting us. Uh, God bless Jonathan. Man, Jonathan has put together an amazing place here. Done such and a great job. He's actually the one that, he's responsible for our first Pulling on Heaven podcast, so shout out to Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan Ayala, and from Jonathan Yala Studios until someone comes <laughs> until up with something a, better. another name. <laughs> <laughs> well, without further ado, let's let's dive in. I know last time you're right. We were kind of we were a little scattershot on our first episode, but I think it's good because I think that's kind of how, you know, that's how we we love to just run down the bunny trails because it's everything is connected as you like to say. Um, but one thing I wanted to I wanted to explore a bit more, the the idea of of God being this invisible God. And on the one hand, it's like, of course he is. We can't see him. But but again, that seems it's almost like that's like in a lot of people's minds, that's a flaw of God, or that's a that's that's a bug, not a feature of what he is. And the and there's a purpose and a design behind that understanding. And I think what's so great um, about exploring this topic too, because I know so much of the heartbeat of your ministry and your church is 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 this idea that that God's in control, God is sovereign, and that we as a church has put too much time and energy focusing on the enemy and the things that happen in our lives that are bad. And when this doesn't happen and the, the devil's out to get me and the devil's trying to ruin my marriage, the devil's trying to ruin my ministry, the devil's causing all these bad things to happen and he's after me. And, and that, you know, you've really helped me to understand and see God from a completely different perspective of that. But I think part of the nature in the design of how God is, you know, one of the reasons I think people tend to look towards that as a reason, as an excuse. Sometimes it's just convenient to blame somebody for things in your <laughs> lives because you don't have to take responsibility, obviously. But but I think also the 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 sense that you, we can't see God. So we don't know what's happening. We don't know what's going on behind the scenes. We don't know what he's up to. We don't know what his purposes are. So the things that seem to feel uncomfortable, the things we don't like, the things that might seem on the surface to be even evilly motivated, those things, it, it's where else are we going to go? Because we can't see God's hand doing those things. And I know that if we could see that, I think we would understand it all differently. So that's something I really think that this episode would be really fun to go much deeper onto this idea of God being the invisible God. Why is that such a significant thing? Well, that's a big question. And I'm <laughs> What if I said, I don't know? It's <laughs> <laughs> a good question. Uh, God is invisible, and we know that because the Word tells us that. We, we know it because we can't see Him. And in part of the human nature, we could say that's one of the easiest things to believe about God, is that He is invisible. The Word says it, and I can hang with that because where is <laughs> where He? Where is He? <laughs> of course exactly. He's invisible. <laughs> we, by our... Uh, our human design, uh, our earth design, mm -hmm. uh, were created not to see him. And the most fundamental reason is, is Jesus said at one time when Thomas came and said, I, if I can touch the nail prints in your hand, if I can put my finger in your side, I'll believe. And Jesus said, you would, and you will, and you do. But then he said this, he said, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. So God is invisible, but in, in what sense is he invisible? He's invisible to, to, to the senses, but he can make himself as visible as, as he wants, because invisible doesn't mean um, non-existent. It simply means seen in a different way or in a different value or a different spectrum of light. You know, like today, there, there are different lights that will show you things you can't see with the, what we refer to as the naked eye. But they're there nonetheless. Yeah. Um, and a lot of those things that we can't see affect our daily lives, impact us in a huge way. The, the, the elements that we breathe and all those things are part of our life. We can't really see them, but we certainly live by them. It's the same thing with God. On such a, 
you know, and I don't, I certainly don't claim to say that I get it all, but I get it all. And this is what I'm saying. It's endless. Uh, yeah. God is invisible, but just like the elements that keep us alive and the things that drive us, our emotions, they're invisible. And I've talked about this a lot. Love is probably the strongest single driving force of mankind and of heaven. The word says, God is love, and they that dwell in love dwell in God, for God is love. So the nature of God is love. But that's invisible. I mean, if I were to say, Steve, do you love your family? And you could say, Steve, do you love your family? I do. <laughs> <laughs> but you couldn't show me that. Unless you demonstrated Unless it, I demonstrated it. through who you are. And it's the same thing with God. God is invisible, but he created mankind to show his invisibility in a tangible way by loving through us, by us forgiving as he is, as he does, uh, by us having a heart to care, to, to reach out, to be the extension of the invisible God. And I, I see it like this. God, one day, Gary Zamora's uh, analogy or way of, of delivering the message of God being invisible, uh, God saying one day, I want to make myself known to heaven and earth. Because we look at heaven and we think heaven is this, and it is, heaven is beyond imagination. The Word says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard. But it is invisible. It's an invisible kingdom because God is the kingdom. He is the king. Uh, Jesus is the Lord of lords. But he calls himself the invisible God. So then it's only reasonable to consider the kingdom of heaven is invisible in the way maybe you or I would consider something visible and invisible. But the invisible, like love, anger, jealousy, bitterness, um, hope, uh, all, all those things that drive us are invisible, but they're such powerful driving forces. They create our humanity. We do the things that we do because of those invisible, seemingly intangible elements, but they drive us so powerfully that these temples are motivated by it. We do what we do because of those invisible realities, but they're very, very real. And here's, here's, here's a problem, uh, or a considered problem, where people begin to doubt is because they can't see what this invisible God is doing. They went, you know, and the disciples said, show us the kingdom. And Jesus' response was, it doesn't work like that. And it's good that it doesn't because it's far deeper. You know, if your senses, if you could, if you could identify God based on your senses, it would only go so deep. But in God, in the invisible nature of who he is, when he reveals himself through us, it goes, as he said, exceedingly abundantly beyond all we know to ask or think. So in essence, it's beyond reasoning. And that's the depth of the love of God. He wants to reveal the fullness of who he is. And he created a creature, a, a nature, humanity, uh, so he could reveal his invisible realities through us. And there's nothing more to me, and I think most people would testify or attest to this, that there's nothing more incredible than knowing God, just this invisible God, just said something to you or revealed something to you or did something through you and you knew you didn't have the power to do it but nonetheless it was done i mean to me that's one of the most incredible experiences i think we can have as a human being is to experience that invisible god working through a visible temple so are you saying then that our purpose is actually, in a way, it sounds like you're saying that our purpose is to make the invisible God visible in the earth. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Through us. Through us. He gave us these, 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 and God, listen, angels came down, they walked the earth. God can take on any form that he wants. But the one thing that God gave us, which can either be your friend or your foe, is a free will. And if you take your free will and you surrender it to the word of God, you believe the word of God like we described, the centurion. I just believe your words. Say it, Jesus said. This is what I'm talking about. That's great faith. As opposed to Thomas, show me. God's saying, this invisible God, I'm going to make myself known. I'm going to make mankind. And I'm going to give, him my, give them my invisible word. But as invisible as it is, it's created everything around them that they'll look at, that they'll touch. 
but it's incre- created, even if you will, even more importantly, that invisible aspect, dynamic, that invisible essence of who they are. And if they will lay claim on the spirit part of who they are and not be driven by the natural part, two things will happen. Number one, they'll take dominion over the earth, which was our design. And what does that mean? It means God is working through you beyond your ability as an individual. And what's the purpose in that? We get to be more like God. And what's greater than that? What's greater than sharing the nature of God? If heaven was everything God wanted, why did he make the earth? Yeah. And if if all the host of heaven in all their glory, and the word says that the, the, the angels of God are beyond number. I mean, how many do you need <laughs> when it's beyond number? If that's all that he wanted, all that he needed, why did he create us? The word says he created all things for his purpose and his pleasure. They were and they are created. And that says all things were created of him, through him, and for him, which is the stabilizer of what we're talking about. We came from the very nature of God. He became visible when he created humanity. He made his thoughts apparent. He gave them a body, and it's called mankind. And he said, because I love you, I want, God wants to love, wants to do one thing, one thing only, he wants to share. And it wants to be shared. And God is love, and that's why we're here. So the invisible God can become visible through you and I. Well, and that just, get, to me, that gives blows open the mind and the meaning behind even the concept of we are the body of Christ. And yeah. and I think we reduce that so much to the idea of, okay, uh, I'm the foot, you're the hand, we can't all be the head, we can't all be this. And we use it as some kind of analogy of how we're supposed to kind of fit together versus what I think it's it's really seeing what you're talking about. We are the actual expression. Yes, Jesus is coming back, but it's it's more powerful for him to come back in bodily form. We totally believe that. Yeah, absolutely. But it's like it's what what if he can manifest himself and there's a million of us. It's, the whole world becomes Jesus on earth. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's what he said. He said he said I'm going, but he said you are going to do things that you've not seen. He said, you, you, all these things you've seen me do, I expect you to do them and greater. Yeah. Well, it's not that Jesus didn't do great things, but what he's saying is, and keep in mind, and this is where people lose it, they think because it's happening through us that we have to be careful, you know, that we don't do too much. <laughs> it it kind of reminds me of when Jesus walked the earth and they're saying, let's see if he does a miracle. And if he does, then let's condemn him yeah. for saying he's God. And I've often thought, well, what part of miracle are you not getting? If he, <laughs> if he is manifesting a miracle as God and he's expressing the nature of God, right. which the word says he was the fullness of God dwelt in him bodily, okay, and that's what we're talking about, then why would you condemn someone that may actually be the son of God? And it, it, it's, it's where our mind, how far can our mind drift away from our intended purpose and design well pretty far you know we can get pretty exclusive in ourselves and become more about me and i and this and i'm do this and i'm do that and i'm only human and those are errors of judgment absolutely but they're also errors from the scriptures they're they are misjudgments it's it's more than a miscalculation it's a total Mm -hmm. it's a total miss off the spectrum of the map of our purpose and our design we're created to emulate, to be an extension of God. That's why Jesus said, you're my body. Why did God need a body? It's real simple. He wanted something to manifest who he is, someone that he can share with. And it's not just as simple as God saying, you know what? I feel like making a toy. I feel like making mankind. Let's make mankind. And if they mess up, we'll fix them. It was far more than that. He, he sent the Son of God as a man, that must be, this This temple must mean something mm. to God. It must be very important because he's perfect in all his ways. He's almighty, omnipresent God. So he must have seen something pretty significant in creating mankind out of dirt and then sending his son to redeem it. It wasn't like man made a mistake and God went, ah, oh, let's fix that, you know. I didn't see that coming. The right. word says, before the foundation of the world, Jesus was prepared. Absolutely. 
Uh, and that doesn't just mean Jesus is standing on the sidelines going, if they mess up, I'll jump in and say, listen to what it's saying. God's saying there's a divine plan here. Yeah, I'm the lamb slain. He was already slain before that. Yeah, before. So this is all already in God. Actually, in reality, according to the scriptures, we were all in God. We've all been in Christ. How else could you be cut out of him or taken out of him or removed from the kingdom unless you're there? And but the point is, is he's saying, I'm I've positioned you, I've created you from that perspective. I need you to keep it. I need you to keep that perspective so you overcome the 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 human nature, which is what it's the weaker part that denies the power. Well, why did he give us a weaker part? So we became completely reliant on God. So our free will meant something to us as well as God. So we get to share in the nature. I mean, if we were just programmed and it just happened. We don't share in that nature. No. How would God do it then? I'll make a creation that can make a, a judgment call, and I'll give them my word so there's no excuse. And if they will trust me and believe me, they share my heart, and I get to share who I am with them. So the invisible God became visible through something that as inert, as uh, incapable as dirt, as abundant as dirt, and yet made it so special. How fearfully and wonderfully made are you? That's only God could do that. And, and, and that opens your mind up to this endless idea of how could something new happen every day? How could something new not happen every day when you serve a God that, whose thoughts are beyond the grains of sand on the sea? And, and he shares those thoughts in a creative form. The thoughts of God become you and I. The thoughts of God become our will. So we're not trying to do the will of God. This invisible God makes us his will because he made us out of his will. And if we do, I say this all the time, you know, a lot of people, the word says even the demons believe in God. Mm -hmm. But do you believe God? It's again like something being at hand. It's 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 available. Sure. Or is it in your hand? Right. So this invisible God created us so he could become more visible. Probably the most simplistic way of saying what I'm saying and well, what God said to us through his word. I've heard you talk about it from the perspective that um when God created us, we tend to think of things from solely from our perspective. Mm. But what was what was his manifestation of uh, in us on earth? What what how was that relating back to heaven? And you've mentioned, you know, they didn't know what hope was in heaven until there was hope. They yeah. didn't know what it meant to be our <clears throat> savior. That there was no concept of that in heaven before this existed. Yeah. Well, God created us to believe by faith. So it's that essence of faith that makes us part of that reality, okay? So invisible God, invisible heaven. And in our minds, like you're saying, we tend to think like there's just this vast world, and there is. And if we could just somehow take a ship, a rocket, that's what the disciples were saying, show us. And he's yeah. saying, you don't understand. If, 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 if you saw it in the way you want to see it, you wouldn't see it. Because mm. it's so beyond those materialistic features of my will. I want to show you the heartbeat of my will. Kind of like saying, my finger is me. No, it's just, it's an extension of, of the body, but the me you can't see. But the me you can experience, the, the you I can see, but not the real you. You can see that body. How many times have you seen someone and said, boy, I didn't expect that to come out of them? You know, you can't, you, you can't yeah. know someone by looking, at, looking them. at them. Sure. It's what they demonstrate, what, what the heartbeat, what, what their spirit uh, demonstrates the extension of who they are internally. That's God with us. Uh, so this invisible world, think about it like this, and this is, this is how I've seen it, how God revealed it to me. You see heaven looking at the Word of God. Jesus is called the Word of God, okay? What did he look like in heaven? I mean, what was the visual? Right. You know, and again, our visual and the visual of heaven are worlds apart, but to heaven, they're looking yeah, at was the he word. Some, was, did he look like some first century Jewish guy with long hair and a beard did, before he came here? Like, what? Did, yeah, that's. 
Did he did he look like lightning? <laughs> did he look like thunder? Did he look like water? You know, the word describes the the thunder and and the sounds of many waters. Did he look like a bright light? Was what? he actually a lamb? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but what did heaven see? Is that blasphemous? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no. I, he was the lamb. But yeah. But but the point is, we're, we're we're making a point here, and the point is, what did what did Jesus look like yeah. in heaven? Because he was manifested in the flesh, and heaven had never seen the Word of God take on a body. And it created such, and they knew, they knew the Word of God has always been. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. The same was in the beginning with God. He's always been. But what did he look like in heaven? Different than he looked like, or what he looked like when he appeared in the earth. He took on human form. And I see heaven going, we've never seen the Word of God look like that before. He is called the firstborn among the brethren. He was the first of his kind, the first of God's creation in that way. Heaven became man. Now, God's ideas became man, and he took dust, and he made us out of his ideas. Let us make man in our image and in our likeness. And if you will, the Trinity said, let's do it. In the beginning, God said, let us make man in our image and in our likeness. In the image and the likeness of God created he them, male and female he created. And man became a living soul. So earth became a living soul. This is the reverse. Heaven becomes a quickening spirit in the body of man. So God made dirt alive, and then Christ became, the, the spirit of Christ became the body of man. So God took on a form. We took on the form of God, and then God took on the form of man. I mean, it had, never, it had never been seen. So heaven for the first time is looking saying, we've never seen the word of God look like a man. We've heard men talk about the word of God, but now we see God in man form. It was different. Heaven had never seen salvation before. They had never seen the Lamb of God. They'd seen sheep slain, but never seen the Lamb of God before. They'd never seen God raise uh, death to life in the form of Christ, the way he was. I mean, dead people got up, but not when Christ overcame death. And the word says he became, he took on death so he could overcome it. No one, he said, took my life. You know, when man died, something took his life. But Jesus is the only one that gave his life in that way and laid it down. I mean, someone could go out and stand in front of an arrow and say, I'm taking this arrow for you. But no one had ever taken death in their hands. Jesus did. Death didn't take him. He took death. Death didn't take him to the grave. He took death to the grave. No one had ever done that. Heaven had never seen that before. So you see what I'm saying? God became more visible, not only in the earth, but in the heavens. And we rem we move the heavens. That's why we call it pulling on heaven 24-7. And what that's all about is G when Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you, what it's actually saying is the kingdom of God is within our grasp. But can you see it? Are you willing to believe it? Because just like Jesus, he could be there. Jesus was there in bodily form, but to many people he was still invisible because their faith wouldn't allow themselves. And it was actually more than their faith. It was their fear that what if he is God? He's going to take over this. They weren't willing to surrender to God. And it's all such a huge analogy about how we should think and how we should surrender. The invisible became visible and still was invisible to a lot of people. So then therefore, this is this is really blowing my mind right now. So then therefore would it be correct to say then that salvation is so much more significant than just so that we get our sins forgiven. Oh my God. And that and that in in, in the way that Jesus is manifest the ma the word made flesh, then us, it's not I who live, but Christ is, who lives in me. I've been crucified as You're no longer Christ it. lives. So he comes alive in me is beyond just the idea of now all my sins are forgiven, but yeah. I'm actually fulfilling the purpose of the Jesus' manifestation of itself, because it's to replicate that so that we all become part of that manifestation. So God's expression of the fullness of who he is radiates through the heavens. Pretty mind-blowing, right? <laughs> oh but come on, if you read the word and you're not afraid, you really believe what you say. I don't just believe in God, I believe God. 
I believe what he said. That was Abraham. Abraham believed in God, but he didn't see what God said. Because faith isn't about what it brings to you. It's about where it takes you. Yeah. So what we're talking about is can we believe, can we believe our faith in who he is can take us somewhere that we've, we've never been? And the answer is yes, because he's an endless, eternal God. He's exceeding, abundant, and beyond all we know to ask or think. So exactly, salvation is so far beyond getting out of trouble. Salvation is about yielding, revealing the purpose of God. And how endless, that's heaven, endlessly experiencing God within us in an endless number of ways, beyond number. Our mind changing daily, revelation, insight about this eternal God, but instead of running from it because we can't figure it out, that's where faith just says, and I'm beating this mic up, man. It's like a <laughs> punching bag to me. I'm not used to having a mic right here. But it's about, uh, it's really about seeing God in us. That's what he wants because he's love. I mean, I, me- I remember our, my daughters when they were little babies. I just, I just love holding them, kissing them. I wanted them to feel my love. I wanted them to feel protected. Today, it's the same thing. But you know what the difference is? Today, they hug back. Today, they yeah. come and they embrace me. God wants us to embrace him just like he embraces us. Wow. Remember, all those, those kind, those good, those precious, excellent emotions and feelings and, and that well-being, that's the nature of God in us. And he wants us to experience it daily. But religion is such a buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> because it just makes us feel like when we do right, we're going to be attacked for the right we do. You know, it's just a big bad world, and they make the devil an omnipresent being, and he's not. Only God is omnipresent. Only God is God. That's why Jesus said when the disciples came and said, we we cast out devils in your name, he said, yes, and, and I told you you would, but he said, that shouldn't be the theme of this song. He said, don't rejoice because of that. He said, I've already seen him fall from, from heaven. He fell from power. It's not that he's powerful in the earth. It's that people believe he is. It's that people are deceived. And James says, when, when do, does all these, these battles and these fighting, all this fighting, where does it come from? He says, it comes from your own lust that war in you. We create our own battles. We create our own devils. And we become the entity of his will because we believe he's evil. He didn't really have to do anything. We just have to believe how bad he is, act out like he does, say that it's him that's doing. And mm. And if, if the devil wanted anything, religion has given it to him, praise, accolades for being there to defeat us. And, to, and we're going to, why not glorify God? And that's what we're talking about, giving God all the glory, giving God all the honor, giving God all the praise, becoming an extension of who he is. Isn't that what his body is about? But we shoot ourselves in the foot when we allow religion to make us focus on things that are bad and trying to overcome this and trying to overcome that. I love the scripture that says, here's your victory. This is what overcomes the world, your faith. Faith in what? In who? In God and how great, how present, how good, how powerful he is. That's why we say all the time, only good can happen to me. We get it from the 23rd Psalm. Uh, Only goodness and mercy. What it actually says is only good can happen to me. It sure does. I believe God is God almighty. So loving, so kind, so good, so present, so powerful, and he created us to be visible through us. Amen. Yeah. Wow. In in conclusion, so then this is a and such an amazing topic that we I know we could just go on for eons about. The idea of taking this and is there is there a way is there a way to to make this I always hate reductionists. Like, here's the three points, and how do we? What, what's your takeaway for the day of this? Because God is not about a takeaway point yeah. at all. But is how how do we begin to to live in a, in agreement with this idea? Make of what it tangible we've been about? to ourselves. What yeah. do we do? A couple of things. Number one, just give God all the glory. Consider you there. There no weapon formed against you can prosper. So don't talk about it. Just eliminate the unbelief in your life. How? How do I? Do? Just let your ear hear your mouth say what God said. I'm blessed. I'm chosen. God is with me. There, there's only no no evil can befall me. God is leading me in the way. Let your let your word begin to change your mind. You know, we sit there and try to think our way 
into, I need to think differently. No, just start speaking. But here's the thing, don't contradict yourself because mm. you're going to believe what you doubt, okay? And if you say God's with me, he's blessing me, but then you doubt that he is because something happens, you're the enemy against your, your own mind. And that's mm. where the consciousness becomes seared with a hot iron. And pretty a lot of times people just say, throw in the towel and say, it's just too hard. No, it's not. See, you just you just became your own your own enemy. Don't say it's too hard. Begin to change your mind by just speaking the word. He's the word, so be like him. What do you mean? Speak the word and the word only. Now, something goes down and you don't like it. It looks like it's bad or evil, and that's kind of how you've learned to to track. Change it. Take that's taking dominion. Come from a kingdom perspective, from the inside. God's doing something. God's doing something. Don't try to understand it. Just believe it. David's standing in front of Goliath. I don't know if he figured out how this was going to come to go down, but he just spoke the word. He didn't have the weapons they had. He, no. he couldn't prove the king's armor. He said, that's just not, doesn't fit me. It doesn't fit how I am. But he remembered one thing. He said, I remember God was with me when the lion came, took the sheep out with my bare hands. So I don't really need anything except faith in God. So what did he do? He quoted the word. He quoted a prophetic word and basically said, when God is for me, nothing can be against me. What you say about me, Goliath, isn't about me at all. It's all about you. You say, I'm going to fall. I'm going to stand. You're going to fall. It's, it's our words that condemn us and our words that justify us. Start by just speaking faith, simple, honest faith, but don't contradict yourself with the next sentence. When it doesn't go your way, say, God's doing something I can't see. The invisible is making himself visible through my faith. That's a starting point. Wow. Amazing. And uh, if you want to hear more of this amazing teaching, <laughs> please tune in on Sundays to uh, to the services at Prophetic Fulfillment Church. You must know that because you're here watching, which I'm sure this is on. Maybe we're on YouTube. I don't know. Yeah. Um, and uh, wow, what a blessing. What a great time. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you because, oh, thank you, again, I've, I've known you for 20 years or more now. And I, I mean, just, just this conversation alone was just just continues to blow my mind. How um, and how can how how can people uh, partner with what you're doing? Support your ministry. Bless you guys as you bless us so much. We can pray for us. Ask God. Ask ask God to continue to just um, to fill us to put a word in our mouth for them. Um, God put a word in in His mouth that you want me to hear. Uh, I, I love that because then revelation will come to me and nothing uh, excites me more. Nothing gets me more more quickened inside, feel more alive than hearing God say something to me. And he's going to say it to me because it's going to impact someone else. Uh, I say all the time, our, our, our future is in someone else. Unlock their future and you find yours. Uh, and support is always so appreciated, the financial support uh, of the people uh, that stand with us, which people, many people do. They, they uh, sow uh, in our ministry. So I say a lot of times, sow a seed in the soil of this word. So we appreciate the people's support, and thank you thank you for, for asking that. Amen. Yeah. Well, until next time, thank you so much. God bless you, <laughs> and thank you, Steve. It's always a joy. So fun. Until next time, we'll see you then.